So verse 21, well, then they dug another well. And they quarreled over that one also. So he called its name Sitna, which means strife. And he moved again from there, and he dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it, so he called its name Rehoboth. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. So Isaac, again, he just, he just moved on. Romans 12, 18 says, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Yeah, but Isaac dug those wells. Those wells belonged to him. That was his water. This isn't fair. This isn't right. That's all true. But as followers of Jesus Christ, we trust the Lord. And, and, and we live peaceably with all men. And we believe, you know what? The, the, the Lord is going to guide me. The Lord is going to work it all out. I can just trust him. And yeah, it's wrong and it's unfair and. They shouldn't do that, but we're going to trust the Lord. And when he arrived at Rehoboth, they didn't quarrel over the well. And so he, he stays in Rehoboth. And the word Rehoboth, it means a, a broad place or a roomy place. And to this day, there are several wells in the area of Rehoboth that date back to ancient times. It's possible that they belong to Isaac. And so I want you to notice here that, that there's quarreling and there's strife in one place. And so Isaac goes to another place and there's quarreling and strife there. And so Isaac moved again. And what did Isaac do? He just kept moving until he came to Rehoboth, until he came to a, a broad place where there's no quarreling. You know, the Bible says Jesus' yoke is easy. And his burden is light. In Colossians 3, it says, let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. And sometimes the way the Lord we leads us to where he wants us to be is by, by making us uncomfortable in our current location. Or, or causing some kind of strife or quarrel to, to get us moving. And he keeps us moving along until we find Rehoboth. Right, where there's just a place of peace and we know, okay, well, this is how the Lord's leading now and it's just time for me to move on from this location instead of staying and fighting over it. I'm just going to move on down the road and move to the next thing and I'll just keep until I find just a place where there's peace and there's no quarreling, no strife. And after Isaac stayed in Rehoboth for a period of time, verse 23 says, then he went up from there to Beersheba, or Beersheba. And you may remember Beersheba from Abraham. Abraham dwelt there. Remember, that's where Abraham planted the tamarisk tree. Remember talking about that? The tamarisk tree was not really for Abraham to enjoy the shade of it. It was for his children and his grandchildren to enjoy the shade of that tree. That's in Beersheba. And so now uh, he, he comes to Beersheba. And we're told the night that he arrived in Beersheba, the Lord God appeared to him, didn't just speak to him from heaven. The Lord actually appeared to him. This is what's called a theophany or even a Christophany, an Old Testament appearance of Jesus Christ. And this is the second time the Lord appeared to Isaac. And the Lord said to him in verse 24, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. The Lord appears to Isaac here and reconfirms the Abrahamic covenant to Isaac. And I want you to note here what the Lord does. Isaac has just come through a pretty rough patch full of strife and contention. He's had to move several times because of strife. And now the Lord appears to him. And, and the Lord wants Isaac to know that his promises for Isaac are still true. That the covenant is still in effect. That God hasn't forsaken his promises. He hasn't forsaken his, his, cousin, his, his, uh, his covenant. The strife, the strife that he's experienced does not mean I have forsaken you. Or I have forgotten you. 
Now, sometimes when we go through a, a tough patch in life or a, a time of strife or contention or difficulty, we can think, well, where's God? Or does it, doesn't God see what's going on? Doesn't God see what's happening to me and how hard it is and how, how difficult it is? And, and here the Lord says, I see you, Isaac. I know what you're going through. I haven't forsaken you. I haven't left you. You may feel, you may feel like I've left, but I haven't, I haven't left you. I, I'm, I'm still with you. I'm still in this. My promises to you are still yes and amen. And notice God says, I am the God of your father, Abraham, which speaks of God's relationship with Abraham. Our God is a personal God who wants a personal relationship with us. And then look what he says. After he says, I am the God of your father Abraham, then God says, do not fear. Now, you know why he says that to Isaac? <laughs> because Isaac's afraid. He's afraid. He's, he, he's, he's, he's fearful. You know, if you're a note taker, this is the most frequent statement that God makes to man in the Bible. Don't be afraid. And why do you think God says don't be afraid more than anything else to mankind? Because we find ourselves in a lot of situations where we're fearful in life. Fearful of, of the unknown, fearful of the future, fearful of what might happen. We, we just, we're, we're fearful in a lot of situations. And so God says, do not fear. And then he says, for I am with you. In the Bible, God's presence is always the remedy for our fears. God's with us. You don't need to be afraid. God's with you. And if you're here today and you are fearful about something, you're fearful about circumstances in your life, spend some time with the Lord. And the, and the presence of the Lord will remove your fears because He's with you. He's a good shepherd who cares well for His sheep. So He says, don't be afraid. Don't fear. I'm with you. I'll bless you. I'll multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. And so what does Isaac do in response? He built an altar there and he called on the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent there and there Isaac's servants dug yet another well. He, he builds an altar and he calls on the name of the Lord. That's worship. Isaac worships the Lord for blessing him. Worship should be our response to God's blessings in our life, God's goodness in our life where we just come before the Lord, Lord, you're, you're just so good. You've been so good to me. You've blessed me and we worship him. And so he, he digs another well there. Verse 26. Now, Abimelech came to him, the king. From Gerar. With Ahuzath, one of it says one of his friends, it, it, it means one of his advisors, one of the king's advisors. And, and Philco, the commander of his army. So here the king of the Philistines shows up with one of his chief advisors and, you know, the chairman of the joint chiefs of staff uh, with him. You know, General Philco here is, is with him, the commander of his army. And verse 27, Isaac is surprised to see Abimelech, because remember Abimelech kicked him out. And Isaac said to them, why have you come to me since you hate me? And have sent me away from you. You know, what do you want with me now? I've moved. I've moved several times, right? Like, leave me alone. 